Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Spirit Side Podcast. I'm Paul James Caden, and today we're going to be talking about wearing a medical mask. Is it a political statement? And before we launch into this conversation today, I just want to say that many times when I read the headlines, when I look at the news, when I look around me and I see the way people are behaving, the decisions they're making or not making, the way they treat one another, I have to ask myself, what are we becoming? I honestly feel in my heart of hearts that we as a country in the United States, that we as a global population are really beginning to set ourselves up for an incredibly massive fall. People get mad when they hear you talk about things like this. People get mad when they hear you talk about their ideologies and the things that they're doing or the people that they're following as their leader. And they get very upset and they curse and they swear and they tune you out and they don't want to hear it. They turn and talk about how stupid you are for saying such a thing. And again, that kind of thing just, it blows my mind. It blows my mind that we've become a race of beings that have lost that great, important, Art of being able to look at ourselves, to self-examine, and then ask ourselves, am I doing the right thing? Am I making a mistake? How are my actions affecting others? We've completely lost that, ladies and gentlemen. It seems that there are the very few who actually still do this or can do this. It's like everyone is beyond question, no matter what they do, no matter what they say. They don't see the harm in what they're doing or what they're saying, even if it is harmful. And I know this is not a topic that's popular with a lot of people. And it's something that I do want to talk about less and less on the show, but as we talk about social issues here on the spirit side, it's important to mention these things when they happen. And the reality is... We have people following in the footsteps of a president here in the United States whose mindset and behavior seems to be little more than that of a very petulant, rebellious child who was quoted just, I believe it was uh, mid or late last week, when he visited uh, a certain uh, factory or production company and he didn't wear a medical mask, at least not in front of the media cameras. And he said he didn't want to give the media the satisfaction of seeing him wear the mask while he was taking the tour of this plant. I mean, really think about it. What president in our history would ever say or do such a thing? 
And when you talk about these things, a lot of people will come forward and say, well, you know, he's still the president of the United States. You shouldn't talk disrespectfully about him. You shouldn't put him down. You shouldn't say things that are negative about him. And, you know, when it comes to the office of the president of the United States, yes, you have to respect that office. You have to respect that authority. You have to respect the person because he's a human being. He's not someone that any of us should wish harm on. We shouldn't wish anything bad to happen. I remember when uh, Barack Obama was president, and I heard a lot of Republican friends at that time, and some of them relatives or just acquaintances. And you saw this statement online quite often as well. They would say, I wish somebody would literally assassinate this guy. What a horrible thing to say. Whether you like him or not, whether you like his politics or not, he's still a human being. And how can we turn around and wish harm and death on someone? I mean, the man had and has a family. Donald Trump has a family. We shouldn't be wishing death on him. And there are some people that have done this, saying they wish that someone would just take Donald Trump out. And that's a horrible thing to say. He's a human being. He has every right to live and learn and grow and learn the lessons that he needs to learn in this world that we currently live on and for his soul to progress or not progress after he leaves this world, same chance every single one of us deserve. So that's my take on all of that. But I don't think it's wrong to look at another fellow human being and say, wow, man, what are you doing? What are you saying? Are you really setting a good example with the things you're doing and saying? Or is this a power trip? Is this some kind of government psyop to see how far people really will go for their chosen leaders? Because here we have a man who says, gee, I wonder if there's any way that we could get disinfectants like bleach or other such substances inside the body to kill the virus. And there were thousands of people or more, perhaps hundreds of thousands of people across the country considering drinking bleach and other disinfectants, calling their doctors, calling the CDC, asking if it was safe to ingest disinfectants. And you can't make this stuff up, folks. It really happened. This man speaks. This man says, jump. And some people say, how high? And some even ask, what bridge? What bridge would you like us to jump off of? He stands up and says, hydroxychloroquine is uh, a great preventative or the cure for the coronavirus. And thousands, hundreds of thousands of people across the country calling their doctor saying, I want to go on hydroxychloroquine. Donald Trump is on it. I want to be on it. And the thing is, 
we don't know if he's on it or not. I mean, at least I question because he's said things before and then turn around a day later, a week later, a month later and said, oh, I just said that to see what the, you know, the press would say. So you don't, you don't even know if he's honestly on this drug or not. But the things that he says, the things that he does, influences a lot of people. And that, ladies and gentlemen, I think as spiritual, moral individuals and beings, we have every right to be able to say, what are you doing? Why are you being so irresponsible with your words because some of these things are irresponsible and then we have our third example here Donald Trump the president of the United States never wears a face mask when he goes into public he says he doesn't really think they're necessary. He doesn't want to give the press the opportunity or the delight to be able to see him wearing one in public. So what do the people who follow him do? They stop wearing face masks. And then what do they do? They start shaming and assaulting people that do. But now the people that follow these political leadings who wear the face mask, their actions are no better because they see someone not wearing a mask and they say, oh, look, there's a Trump supporter. Let's attack this person. We, they're not wearing a mask, so now we know what their political agenda is. We know who they support. Let's get them. And they shame them, and they argue with them. They throw them out of stores and supermarkets. How shameful are these actions? We don't stop to think are we doing the right thing are we treating one another the way we should be treating one another we're turning into tribal animals and I've said this ladies and gentlemen I've said this and I made some people mad with my shows in the past because I said this is coming this is going to get worse because we're all dividing up into these groups. We're all appointing who our leader is going to be, who we're going to follow. I've referred to it before as the world dividing up into little cult-like sects all over, political, spiritual, religious, none of the above. And there's still people that listen to the show and say, oh, you know, you don't know what you're talking about. You're just on there talking, you know, half the time that uh, everybody's in a cult. Yeah, we are. Look at us. It's the Democratic cult against the Republican cult. It's the firearm cult cult against the local government cult it's the religious conspiracy theory cults against everybody else even other religious people because they got it all wrong and they're going to die in the apocalypse that's coming I mean where does it end I want I'd like every person listening to this show who has heard me say this for almost a year now. In fact, I think 
I, I really started talking about this, the, that, that, that cult, uh, mentality that the world was taking on in its whole system that it has ever since I started podcasting. And I put many of those podcasts on YouTube and I've talked about this sort of thing before there was any coronavirus or pandemic or any of this. But this is who we're becoming. And we're letting other people do our thinking for us. The president says, gee, could we take disinfectants inside the body to kill the uh, the coronavirus? And people say, gee, can I drink disinfectants? I mean, we, we don't stop to think those things are very potent chemicals. They're poisonous. We've known this all of our lives if you drink Clorox bleach, it could cause some serious problems, possibly death, if you drink enough of it. And we're seriously going to just set our brain aside and ask that question, would it be okay if I ingested these chemicals? Someone says, I don't wear a mask. I don't think they're necessary. Suddenly, we have a bunch of people saying, well, I'm not wearing a mask either. I don't think it's necessary. Why? And, and I'm not just talking about this where Donald Trump is concerned. I mean, this is not a, a Trump rant. I mean, I'm using him as an example that all of us... Um, can see. I mean, there's a lot of this happening and a lot of other little sects and groups that, that if I were to mention, most of you probably wouldn't know who or what I'm talking about. But when you look at politics, just as an example, Donald Trump or even the, uh, the Democrats, how people act or react to the words of their political party, that's a, a, a very big, stark example of where we're at. And this is happening on so many levels. People just letting other people do their thinking for them, no matter how ludicrous the decision might be. And it trickles down into the, you know, religious or conspiracy theory aspect where some of these people, some of these internet personalities, if the leader were to say, I think we could survive all of this and survive the coming Armageddon if we all cut off our right hands, half the people or more that listen to that voice would, without thinking, without reasoning through it, would probably cut off the right hands. Sight on scene, no questions asked. So how dangerous is this? And how dangerous that in the middle of a pandemic, we are making everything political. That one wears a mask, that one doesn't. And we attack one another like we're a street gang out there looking for the enemy. Folks wearing a mask when you go out in public is not a political statement. It is something you are doing or supposed to be doing to protect those around you to protect yourself, to protect your family member or family members, rather. You've heard me talk on 
one of the podcasts uh, not so long ago, probably about a month ago, about two weeks into the pandemic, how I talked about my wife and I going to the store and people were buying all the toilet paper. Uh, People were looking nervous, but then there were individuals walking all around the store just coughing and sneezing right out into the open air. Because again, we, we don't think. We don't consider how our, how our actions affect the people around us. What if one of those people had COVID-19? What would that mean for the other people in the store? What would that mean for the people in the same aisles as those persons. You can't, sadly in this day and age, expect that the other guy or girl is going to do the right thing or that they have your best interest at heart. Because most people don't think about the other people around them. So when you're going out and when you're wearing that face mask, it's for your protection. Because people, even during the flu season every year, you see them in the store, they're just coughing and sneezing right into the open air not covering their nose, not covering their mouth, not coughing into their arm or a tissue or anything, just blatantly right out. I mean, with other people literally standing just a couple of feet away from them, looking at items on the supermarket shelf. And here we are, two, three weeks into a pandemic, People doing the same thing. Do we want to take that kind of chance? Do we want to make this political? I think it's very foolish to do so. Before there was ever a COVID-19 and it's flu season and I'm in the supermarket and I see somebody, I'm heading into an aisle and I see somebody just blast out a big rasping cough or a sneeze in the middle of the aisle, I turn around and I leave. Even if it's just the flu, even if it's just a cold, I don't want to get it. My work every day is something that I have to focus my mind, and if I'm cloudy and tired or fatigued, My work's not coming out well, or I don't work because I'm making a mess out of it. (laughs) It's just the way I am. I, I get those man colds, guilty as charged. But I stay away. And if I'm in public and I'm not feeling well, or I got a scratchy throat, or maybe I have a slight cold, I never cough into the open air. I always make sure if it's the winter time, I put my face right inside the the side of my coat like Bella Lugosi is Dracula. And, you know, I cover it. Why should I, because of my negligence and just spacing out, not thinking about anything or anyone around me, why should I make them sick? You know, I have a stepdaughter who's disabled, and she has lung issues. And every time she gets just the common cold, she has a common cold for about one to two days. Then suddenly it disappears. And within 24 hours, she has pneumonia. This kid has to go to the hospital. She has to be on antibiotics. She has to be on steroids. She has to be on, um, I forget what the uh, 
uh, the nebulizer that you you put the uh, albuterol in and you know she breathes it in. This kid gets jacked up. She gets a common cold literally. This kid could die. So who am I even to walk around the store with a common cold and take for granted, oh, if I just cough and sneeze in the open air, maybe there's somebody standing two or three feet away from me. Maybe they're young. Maybe they look healthy. Maybe everything's fine. But how do I know they don't have an issue like my stepdaughter? And if I give them just that common cold, or God forbid the flu, if I have it, that I could cost that person through my negligence their very life. See, we don't think about that. We just go along our merry way thinking, well, it's not going to happen to me, or I believe the coronavirus is this, or I believe it's that, or I don't believe it's real at all. Well, what if you're wrong? What if you came up and sneezed in my stepdaughter's face and I said, hey, man, get the heck away from her. You realize if she catches what you have, she could literally die. Oh, it's just a cold. Because you don't know. You don't know the health issues that she is dealing with. What her lung issues are. You don't know in your mind it's just a cold. You're not even thinking about how just that cold could affect somebody else. So we really need to stop making this a political statement. We need to stop being selfish. We need to stop just thinking about ourselves. Because we put ourselves in this bubble. This is what I think. This is what I'm going to do. I'm just walking around in complete oblivion of everything and everybody that's around me. We have to stop. Because look what's happening, ladies and gentlemen. Walking around in that bubble of oblivion. Somebody else is going to fill that empty glass that is your mind whether it's a politician, whether it's a religious leader, whoever it is, and that's what's happening. Seldom do we think for ourselves anymore. Seldom do we think about the big picture anymore. Seldom do we think about other people around us anymore. And that's really showing during this pandemic. Because rather than thinking and at least trying to do the right thing, no matter what our personal feelings or thoughts are on the subject, oh, it's just a cold. That cold could kill someone like my stepdaughter. We have to start thinking about things like that. What about the elderly woman or the elderly gentleman that's in the supermarket aisle with you when you're coughing and sneezing all over during flu season? How do you know they don't have a respiratory problem? How do you know they don't have some kind of heart condition or something that the common virus could really take them down? We need to start expanding the thoughts, not just being in that oblivion and then seeing presidents and popes or whoever and saying, oh, gee, I think I'll just do what they're doing. Oh, gee, I kind of like that guy. He's not wearing a mask, so neither am I. And I'm going to make it a political statement and I'm going to look down upon or make trouble for those I see wearing a mask. I'm going to persecute them. Yeah, they're stupid. That's a bit of an exagger exaggerated uh, take on it, but essentially that's what we're doing. 
we're cutting off our own right hands because the leader that we trust and follow says, do it. And it's even getting a little more dangerous than that because many of the leaders out there, and again, I only hold the political ones up as the big, biggest example that all of us can look at and notice. There are many, 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 many others right now. If you're wrapped up in the whole spiritual life like I am, wow, you have no idea how many sects and religious groups and cults in the making are out there right now and how extremely fanatical their followers are. So we are a ticking time bomb in our society right now. And the sad and most dangerous part about all of this is that our leaders are not just telling us to cut off our own right hands, metaphorically speaking. They're telling us to cut off the heads and disembowel the people around us who are not like us or don't stand for our ideologies and beliefs. That disemboweling and beheading being, of course, metaphorical for turn on them, hurt them, persecute them. And in some cases, yeah, people do get hurt and people do get killed. And I think there's a lot more that's going to be coming if we don't give ourselves a nice, as they used to say back in the day, a nice cold slap in the face and wake up from this spell that we've been under. This is a, a very serious mess that we're getting ourselves in, folks. And this is no time to be mad or, you know, oh, man, I don't like what this guy's saying. Oh, you don't know what you're talking about. I don't care if people say that. We're all entitled to our opinion. But what I do care about is that I think we all need to wake up a little bit and do some self-examination. And not the kind of self-examination that we just say, these are my thoughts, my beliefs, my actions, therefore they're, they are right, and I will do what I will. No, I mean self-examination. Looking at all those things and really asking the questions. How does it affect the people around me? Does it make society a better place? Does it help my neighbor? Is it of love? Would God approve of what I'm doing? And some people might say, without a doubt, yes, even if their actions are bad. But again, that's where we have to say, is what I'm doing an action or a thought of love? Does it, does it line up with the golden rule? Love your neighbor as yourself. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. If the answer is no to any three of those questions, is it of love? Is this a loving thing that I'm thinking, doing, and saying, or about to do? Does it line up with the golden rule that I'm doing unto others as I would have them do unto me and loving my neighbor as myself? If it doesn't line up with any of those three things, then we need to really seriously reconsider that thought or that action or what we're about to do. Because let me tell you something, folks, and I'm not shy about talking about this. We may think we're hurting other people and we may think we're defeating the enemy by hurting other people. But in the end, we only hurt ourselves. Because believe me, there is a life beyond this life. And what we do, we take back 
to God, to that world beyond this world. And there's no favoritism there. God is not going to care whether you were a Democrat, a Republican, a Trump supporter, a non-Trump supporter, a Methodist, a Catholic, a Baptist, or what sect or cult or group you belong to, or if you were a conspiracy theorist out there trying to spread the truth. He's only going to look at the heart and the motive. And those are the only things that will matter at that moment. I hope we'll all think about this today because this is a very important topic that we really do need to start thinking about. Once again, I appreciate all of you listening. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay well, and take care of one another. Love your neighbor as yourself. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you, whether they're a Democrat, a Republican, whatever their skin color is, whoever or whatever they are, just be good to people because we're all people. As they used to say, you cut us, we all bleed red. Take care of one another. Make a difference. Thank you again for listening, and I'll see you next time here on The Spirit Side.